Hey everyone, this is Sean Cusick from TrueToLifeGames.com or TTLGames.com and I want to tell you about this really cool new game we have called Leprechaun's Castle. It's, it takes place in Ireland. You're noble lords and ladies that are traveling across the country and trying to explore these castles and get leprechauns, pots of gold, and things like that before anyone else, any of your opponents can get away with that. But it plays two to six players. It's about 30 to 60 minutes long, depending on the number of players. And uh, we recommend it for ages eight and up. It, uh, I've had some younger kids, six and seven, play it. Some struggle with it, some do just fine. But I, I do recommend eight and above because they seem to consistently be uh, able to handle it just fine. It's uh, real easy to learn and the setup is extremely simple. Um, just real quick for the setup, every player will choose a family crest um, as their player and each family has a starting castle which uh, is they should have ancestral history to those areas for the different families. They, I did quite a bit of different research on that and uh, have some subtle fun things about all the 32 counties of Ireland on that. So they'll pick their starting castles, place those, and uh, draw a territory card which is pretty cool. It shows you where on the map that this place is. So this is Limerick and that's where you put your starting leprechaun. And you'll go ahead and draw another one for the initial setup and that's also in Dublin. You want to draw the number of cards equal to the number of players and that way you've always got several leprechauns out on the board. Uh, as people travel and manage to collect and get the leprechauns, what we'll do is we'll draw another territory card and that's how another leprechaun comes out and it, it cycles that way until all 17 leprechauns have been collected and that's what ultimately ends the game. And uh, that's really it for your setup. That, it's that simple. And then for just kind of a turn example, every player is going to have four actions on their turn. And for those four actions, there's a number of things you can pick from. You can place a road on the map for an action. You can destroy a road from the map. You can travel across a road. You can reveal an exploration card or you can even spend a pot of gold and gold coins and things of that nature um, if you should find them. And so for just a quick turn example, let's say this guy has five roads here and he's not going to know what they are. He'll draw them at random at the start of his turn up into to the same number, so I think in this case we'll have five. It's scalable to the number of players. So he'll place his road for one action and a second road for a second action. And one really cool thing we do with these roads is uh, I have some friends that are colorblind, so we put these little plus symbols in the blue bar here, so if you're colorblind you can uh, make sure you're placing these correctly. So this would be one action, two action. Now this guy will travel on this road for a third action and he's going to actually collect this leprechaun. So he'll keep this leprechaun until the end of the game. It's uh, worth more points. And since he got that leprechaun on a castle, he will take the points shown on the castle. So in this case Dublin's four points, so he'll take four points. And the last part of his turn is now he'll begin his exploration phase and take four exploration cards. So he's now taken one action, two action, traveled for three, and his fourth action will be revealing the card. In this case, this is nothing. That's an empty castle. And that ends that player's turn because he's now taken his four actions. When this player's turn resumes on next time, he'll continue his exploration of the castle. So this would be his action one of his next turn, which is a gold coin in this case, which is great for him. So he'll uh, take a coin. His second action would be another empty castle there, and his third would be a pot of gold, which is really great for him, and now he's got one more action that he can begin building toward another place, or, or um, he could even spend this pot of gold as an action, which gives him some other special options and advantages. So um, that is really about it, to a turn. it, it for a turn. It, it does create some fun competitiveness. Uh, you'll see some interesting things happen where one person is busy exploring a castle and a leprechaun appears right next to him and another player races to get it just before he did and, and you've got everyone that's playing kind of ooh and and ah and, and, and there's lots of fun reactions going on there. It's, uh, <laughs> it gets pretty exciting sometimes. The, uh, there, there's lots of replayability with this game which I thought was pretty cool. The, uh, 
there's only 17 leprechauns, but there's 32 territories, so it's pretty unlikely that any two of your games will ever be the same, since the leprechauns will appear in all different places. Um, you could obviously choose different starting families, which have different starting castles, things like that. But one neat thing we did is we created a bunch of special ability cards, and those give you know different players different advantages. And I created an advanced rules where you can you can draw a special ability at the start of the game, or you can embed them in your exploration deck, and that way when you're exploring castles, maybe you discover a special ability uh, at random that way. So there's just some fun ways to keep it interesting, and uh, and a lot of people enjoy those kinds of options. So it never really gets old. Um, there's uh, just to talk a little bit about some of the other fun things. So we, uh, I might have mentioned this already, but there's 32 counties, which are the, all the real 32 counties of Ireland. Um, the family crests have their, their origin within the vicinity. I even tried to place the castles on the map relatively regional where the actual castle exists. Um, that was just kind of some fun research. Um, I, I've been to Ireland a few times, and it's a beautiful country. I really love it. So I, it was just kind of fun to do that. And uh, I, some of my friends call that covert curriculum, and some other neat thing, <laughs> fancy words like that to discuss, you know, for that kind of learning and stuff. I just thought that was neat. And uh, the only other thing is, uh, oh yeah, the art. I should talk about the art. So um, Peter Slaby did the art for the game. He did all the crests, the cards, everything. He did a fantastic job. It really turned out really well. Um, I'll try to link his blog if you want to look at more of the stuff he's done. It, it really turned out neat. And uh, Gary Simpson is doing the art for the rule book for me. And Gary does all kinds of fantastic art as well. He's actually working on my other game, Aliens in Antarctica, which is going to be a fun one to get published here pretty soon too. And so uh, I'll, I'll try to give you some links to, to show him, to show you his stuff too, because it, it, it's really neat. But uh, that's pretty much it. That's Leprechaun's Castle. Like I said, it's simple, it's exciting. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you get a copy and you get to enjoy it someday too. Thanks.